Okay, problem six. The derivative of a function is defined by f prime equals, and then it gives us a piecewise function. The graph of the continuous function f prime, shown in the figure above, has x intercepts at x equals negative 2 and x equals 3 ln 5 thirds. The graph of g on negative 4 to 0 is a semicircle and f of 0 equals 5. All right, part a. For negative 4 to 4, find all values of x at which the graph of f has a point of inflection. Justify your answer. Okay, points of inflection. I know we would like to look at f double prime. So when I'm looking at f double prime on this one, um, I'm going to make myself an f double prime chart. And if I'm at f prime and I want to go to f double prime, I'll be looking at the slopes. So if I'm looking at the slopes, the slopes are negative till I get to negative 2. And then they are positive till I get up to x equals 0. And then they are negative after that. So points of inflection. Points of inflection occur at x equals negative 2 and x equals 0. And I will say that that is because g double prime changes sign. Right, that specific problem was worth two points. If you identified negative 2 and 0 as points of inflection, give yourself a point. And if you said that, it's because g double prime changes sign. Give yourself a point. All right, part B. Find f of negative 4 and f of 4. So we pretty much have two problems going on in one problem. So first of all, I'd like to find f of negative 4. First thing that I want to do is figure out which one of these two equations am I going to use, and I'm going to use the top equation because negative 4 is included in the directions for that. Then I notice that this is represented by f prime, so if I want to find f, I'm going to have to take the integral of f prime, and in this case, f prime is going to be g. Um, the second thing, I really would like some endpoints for this. I do want to find um, f of negative 4, so I know negative 4 is going to be one of my endpoints. The other one, since they told me that f of 0 equals 5, 0 is actually going to be my other endpoint. So we're going to make this go from negative 4 to 0. Okay, and then I'm going to put equals. If I take the integral of this, the antiderivative, um, this we're taking the antiderivative basically of f prime, that will leave me at f. And then don't forget, we're going to evaluate at the endpoint. So we'll have f of 0 minus f of negative 4. Right? They told us that f of 0 was equal to 5. I don't know this. I can definitely find this because they gave me a picture. Here is the picture right here. So if I'm given a picture, we're looking for the area under the curve. I would like the area under the curve from negative 4 to 0. Okay, so I want this part right here. Okay, to calculate that, I'm going to take the area of this rectangle and subtract out the area of the semicircle, and that will give me the area that I have shaded. So we are going to do the area of that rectangle is going to be 4 times 2 minus the area of the semicircle will be 1 half pi. The radius is 2, so it will be 2 squared, which is 4. So this will be 8 minus 2 pi. Okay, and then I have equals 5 minus f of negative 4. Now I'm just going to try to be solving for f of negative 4. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I'll get 3 minus 2 pi is equal to negative f of negative 4. And then I'll just multiply both sides by a negative 1. And I'll get negative 3 plus 2 pi is equal to f of negative 4. So that is my answer for that part. That was worth 2 points. If you have an integral set up, give yourself a point. If you have the right answer, give yourself a point. All right, the next part, very similar in the way that we worked it. So if you did not get your points for the first part, you might want to see if you can actually do the second part on your own now before you get it scored. All right, so f of 4, to get f of 4, same way, we're going to take the integral. This time I'm actually going to be using, using this equation because 4 is in this boundary. So I'm going to have 5e e to the negative x over 3 minus 3. And this will go from, I want it to go from 4, and I'm still going to use 0, so it will go from 0 to 4. And then when I do that, when I take the integral or antiderivative of f prime, that will lead me to f. And again, I will evaluate it at the endpoints and subtract them. Okay, again, we know that f of 0 is equal to 5, so now it's going to be solving for f of 4. Okay, to get the left side, we're actually going to take the integral of this equation. There's a minus sign, so I'm going to separate it into two parts. So I'm going to have 5e e to the negative x over 3 minus the integral of 3. Okay, to do this problem, I'm going to do a u substitution. So I'm going to let u equal negative x over 3, which is really actually negative 1 third x. The derivative of that is going to be negative 1 third. 
I have a 5 sitting there, so to um, I'm going to have to multiply by, I want it to say negative 1 third. I'm going to have to multiply it by negative 1 15th, I believe. So negative 1 15th times 5 will give me negative 1 third. So I need to do negative 15 on the outside. So this now is going to be negative 15 e to the u. The integral of e to the u is just e to the u, so it's going to be negative 15 e to the negative x over 3, and then minus the integral of 3 is 3x, and then I get to evaluate it at my endpoints of 4 and 0. Okay, if I plug 4 in here, I'm going to get negative 15 e to the negative 4 thirds minus 12, and then if I plug in 0, if I plug 0 in for this part, that will give me e to the 0, and e to the 0 is 1, so I'm going to get negative 15 minus 3 times 0 is 0. Okay, so this part is going to give me negative 15 e to the negative 4 thirds, and then when I have minus 12 minus negative 15, that's going to turn into plus 15 minus 3. Okay, so now I'm going to write over here what I have. I have negative 15 e to the negative x over 3 plus 3 equals this right side still, f of 4 minus 5. I meant to get f of 4 by itself, I'm going to add 5. So I'm going to get negative 15 e to the negative x over 3 plus 8 is equal to f of 4. So that is my answer for that one. And when, well, I should have put this was a 4, not, a, not an x. So negative 4 thirds, okay, this should be a 4 there too. Okay, so that was again worth two points. If you set up your integral, you got a point. This time, if you got the correct antiderivative, so if you were able to get to this step right here, you're going to get another point. And then if you got the right answer, you're going to get one more point. Part C. For all x between negative 4 and 4, find the value at which f has an absolute maximum and justify your answer. Okay, finding an absolute maximum, if you remember, we're going to find where the deriv does the derivative equal 0. We'll find our critical values, and then we evaluate at the original function at our critical values and the endpoints. So if I want to know where the derivative equals 0, this is f prime right here. It's going to be at negative 2 and at this value. And fortunately, they told us what that value was. So our critical points, f prime equals 0 when x equals negative 2 and when x equals 3 ln 5 thirds. Okay, so technically, we should be doing this. We should find f of negative 2 we should find f of 3 ln 5 thirds, and then we want to evaluate the endpoints, f of 4 and f of negative 4. Well, if you recall, we have already found f of 4 and negative 4 from part b, and they were a real pain. So we found them. They were um, f of 4 was equal to 8 minus 15e to the negative 4 thirds. And then negative 4 was 2 pi minus 3. Okay, um, so we technically need to actually do the exact same process for 4 and negative 4 as I did for negative 2 and 3 ln 5 thirds. But um, I'm going to take a little bit different approach because that's such a tedious process, there must be a better way of doing it. So I'm actually going to, even though it says to do an absolute, I'm going to try to cheat a little bit and then I'll show you, I'll tell you why I was able to. So I'm actually going to do an f prime chart just like we usually do for a normal maximum. And if I put my f prime numbers on the chart, it's going to be at negative 2 and 3 ln of 5 thirds. Before negative 2, my graph is above the x-axis, so f prime will be positive. Um, between the two, it is still positive, and then after 3 ln 5 thirds, the graph is negative. So if you can see from this graph, we know that f is increasing until x equals 3 ln 5 thirds because f, double prime, f prime is greater than 0 or we can say I'm positive, and f is decreasing after x equals 3 ln 5 thirds, and that's because f prime is negative. Okay, because that, if you can think of the function, the function has to be starting down somewhere and then going up till it gets to x equals 3 ln 5 thirds, and then it's going back down again for the rest of the time. So if we think of our endpoints at negative 4, 
if I'm trying to think of what the graph would look like, down at negative 4, it's going to be down here somewhere, and then it's got to go up till it gets to 3L and 5 thirds, and then after 3L and 5 thirds, it's got to go back down again. So these two endpoint values have to be under this value right here. So because of that, um, x equals 3L and 5 thirds has to be the place where there's an absolute maximum. So I'm just going to say there's an absolute maximum. at x equals 3 ln 5 thirds. And that's basically because, and then I'm going to refer to that, because f is increasing until there, and then it's decreasing after there, and there are no other, I'd have to go up till I got there and down after that, and that is pretty much it. Okay, if you found that there's an absolute maximum and you said that it occurred at x equals 3L and 5 thirds, you get a point. And then if you said, um, you gave a reason why, you'd get your second point. Okay, so that is pretty much it.